All right, what I'm going to show y'all how to do today is create this background. We're mainly going to be focusing on how to uh, trace the raptor head and put a gradient on it without having to sit here for hours on end, actually going and outlining and everything. I'm not going to focus on this travel uh, so much. I'll show y'all the basics of how to do it. If y'all want an in-depth tutorial, let me know. I'll do it. All right, let's go ahead and get started. I already have Photoshop open. Mm. Photoshop is basically, hey, I got an email. Photoshop is basically just going to be so we can save it as a JPEG. We're going to be doing all of our work in Adobe Illustrator. Let's go ahead and open up a new file. 1920 by 1080. That's the standard high def widescreen format. Okay. I left mine as untitled. Um, y'all can name it whatever. Y'all can name it Raptor 1. Y'all can name it anything you want. And then I didn't want to draw up a raptor, so I found one online. Of course, that's the whole reason for doing this tutorial, to keep you from having to draw all those lines. Now what we're going to do, since this is a cut and dry, two color picture, we're going to select our live trace drop down and go to simple trace. Now that that's traced out, go ahead and press expand. Ungroup it so we can manipulate it more easily. Select the outside path and get rid of it. Next thing we're going to be using is Pathfinder. If you don't have Pathfinder selected, go to Window, Pathfinder. It's probably going to come up in a drop down like this. Go ahead and drag it over here to where that blue line shows up on your toolbar. Drop it, it becomes part of your toolbar. Using the white selector, select the outline, not the path put this in this area basically so we select the whole thing hold shift and select right there right there and right there now that we've got the outlines all that selected select minus front basically deleting everything in the front most of the time when you have all these little jagged edges and everything go ahead and move your image because you're probably gonna have some leftovers there they are, there's my leftovers. And if it made a major difference in the picture, I would take it off, but usually that's just stuff like uh like you see in here all these paths that just automatically got cut. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and bring this up to size that we want it. Y'all gonna have it bigger. Y'all gonna have it take up the whole page for all I care. It's your background, you do what you want. But I want it over here, that way I have room for a little something to put over here. Or that way I got more room for a flat back, black background so I can see my icons better. And what we're gonna do is we're going to add a gradient. And the type of gradient we're gonna wanna use is gonna be radial. Now I know it looks funky now, but go ahead and grab your gradient tool over here. And as you can see, wherever you put it, the middle is where your gradient is, and whatever wherever it ends is where your gradient ends. So if you got a drag it right there, it's gonna end right there. But if you, I'm gonna click mine right here and drag it out to where I got a nice, good, flowing color. There we go. Maybe a little less. Right about there. And what you're going to do is you're going to add two more gradient tabs just so we got more smoothness in the color. Go up here to your color guide and click apply or edit colors. Click edit. Let's see, I want to move the ones down here that I'm not going to be using. I'm moving those out of the way. I don't need that one. Let's see, this one I do not need this one there we go this is one of the ones we're going to be using these that these right here that one that one and that one these three should be out of the way and what i do is i unlink them because see when they're linked you move one you move them all but when you unlink it you can move it however you want so this one right here should be the furthest one from the gradient let's see sure is that's the furthest one out so this one's going to be a a dark 
almost golden. Yeah, there we go. This one right here. I like where that one's positioned, though, except I want it brighter. And this one right here, even brighter, mainly because that one's hardly noticeable. Um, actually, I don't even think I'm using that one. So after that, I'm going to press OK. Now, y'all are thinking, oh, well, that doesn't look like the same picture. No, it doesn't. And I'm going to show you why. Because these haven't been tweaked. I want this down here. I don't want it so bright. I want this extended out. Bring that over. Bring it over some more. And then you might even want to mess with your uh, your gradient tools. You might want to come back over here, go to your color guide again, and just brighten everything up a little bit. This is where it's all these are all going to be your decisions. I really have nothing to do with that. See how the gradient kind of just cuts off? You can change that. Bring that back out. Bring it in some more. Now it's smoother, but I don't like how it cuts off right there. So I'm going to go ahead and bring my gradient out some more. Maybe adjust it a little bit more. Okay, I'm going to leave the tweaking up to y'all because that's all... Um, that's all discretionary. That's all up to y'all how y'all want it to look. Uh, y'all might just want it cut and paste uh, with a red cross over it. Or y'all might want it to be a line. I want it radial. And I want it to start right here. I want it to end right there. Let's see. There we go. Now, from there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to my blank one. I'm going to go to my rectangle tool. I'm going to select the fill as black. I'm going to make a rectangle over the whole thing. Now all you got to do is select this, drag it, and drop it. Then adjust it however you want it. Y'all could always, uh, if y'all don't like that method, let me show you another one. No. The other way, of course, is to add another layer. Hide that one so it's not in the way. Uh, actually move this one so it's behind. So that this one's on the bottom and this one's on the top. Hide that layer. And then over here... Then over here, add your uh, background. Make sure you uh, <laughs> change it to black on black. And that's kind of a mild black. I'm going to go ahead and saturate mine all the way out and then put the K to 100. So this is, that's a deep black. Now if we wanted a shallow black, be like that. That's a grayish black. I want it 100% black as black can get. And now what we're going to do is we're going to show that underlying layer. And if you notice this is a uh, not quite a deep black. That's more of a shallow black like I was talking about earlier. And so there's a couple harder ways to fix it but if you want it to blend perfectly every time with your background what you're going to want to do is select your your object that you want to change. Go to your gradient double click on your last one which is my black and change your opacity to zero now you see what that did that looks better that's more like a, a candle and uh, if you don't like the way you can't see it of course you can come back over here to your gradient tool as always and just drag your gradient out again now now you can see it. And I think mine was actually a little bit further than that. Like that. There we go. That looks good. Now the next thing we have to do is we have to export this to Photoshop and we have to save it as a JPEG or whatever the file you prefer to save it as because as you can tell, save as, you're not going to be able to 
you basically you can either save it as a PDF and open it up in, in Photoshop or some any of these other files. You don't want to do that. You want to just zoom out a little bit, make sure they're both selected, highlight it, drag it down here, and drop it in. Now this is going to show that it's um, bigger than it actually is, but if y'all remember, I drew that black outline bigger than the actual page, so all you got to do is scale it down. Now, of course, um, you can go ahead and maximize this. That's just all the proportions are off just because I made that black square bigger. Go ahead and size it up how you want it. Anything that's not showing whenever you save it automatically is going to get cut off. It's just going to save the visible parts as a photo. File. Okay, deselect it. Place the file. Go ahead and place it. It's just asking if you want to change it from the vector file of Adobe Illustrator to uh, a Photoshop style. Now what you're going to want to do is file, save as, JPEG. Of course you could pick uh, JPEG 2000, you could pick uh, PNG, GIF, or GIF. A lot of the stuff, I prefer JPEG just because Whenever you press save, it's going to ask you uh, your quality and your image. It's going to tell you your image size. It's going to let you preview your image size and all these other settings. Y'all would press OK and it would save it. I already got a Raptor, so I'm going to push cancel. All right, if there's anything else y'all want to see, if y'all want to see me draw the travel, y'all let me know. Y'all can also leave comments in the comments box below. I want to know if this helped y'all I wanna know if this was a waste of your time I wanna know uh, if y'all need a more in-depth tutorial uh, if y'all wanna see different tutorials if y'all missed a step and you're wondering what happened why it didn't turn out the same y'all let me know also I would like to encourage y'all to make um, video responses I wanna see y'all make y'all's wallpaper whether it's the exact same one showing me that I did it and I made a good uh, tutorial I want to see y'all make different wallpaper stuff I've never seen, stuff other people's never seen. I want to see anything and everything that y'all want to share with me. I want to help y'all out. Y'all let me know what I can do. I appreciate y'all watching my videos.